Good afternoon, everybody. Um, welcome to this uh, co-design webinar and feedback loop for the Safe Space Hub in the Redcliffe area. Um, my name's Bronwyn Edwards. I'm the CEO of uh, Roses in the Ocean and with me is James today. So we're the co-design um, co facilitation team for this particular project. Um, so first of all, we'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands on which we're meeting from today and pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging and also uh, acknowledge people with a lived experience of suicide. Um, for those who are involved in, in this co-design process and, and people within the Redcliffe catchment area especially, um, but also to acknowledge the, um, that a number of health professionals do come to their work every day with their own personal lived experience of suicide. And of course, um, all of you are impacted by suicide through your line of work. So thanks so much for joining us. Um, I'm just going to share my screen now, so just um, bear with me while I do that, and we will take you through the outputs that we have seen so far. So first of all, just to orientate you to where we are in the process, um, we, are, we have been conducting uh, focus groups with people with lived experience of suicide, and then we brought those uh, three different small groups together in, in one large group session. Um, with the people with lived experience. And earlier today, we have just conducted their feedback loop, their webinar, and, and there's an accompanying survey for that. And then uh, in parallel to that has been our time that we've spent with you. So we've had a number of uh, small focus groups with uh, health professionals. And uh, today here where that red circle is, is your first feedback loop. So from today's um, recording, there's also a survey that will all go out to you all and please send that far and wide through other health professionals working in this Redcliffe area. Um, the the um, information that we gather through both of these uh, feedback loops will then all be uh, collated and we'll feed that into our group session with you that we will have um, as the next stage of this co-design process. So the point of today, though, is to uh, present back to you what we've heard from you in across the various focus groups. So your chance to sense check, make sure we've captured everything and anything else that you've thought of since those sessions. Or if you haven't been involved to date, this is your opportunity to, to be able to input. So um, for those who weren't part of the co-design process, uh, in our small focus group sessions with health professionals, we were looking to explore Feelings and, emotion, uh, feelings and emotions that are associated with essentially walking uh, a day in the life of a health professional when you're looking to provide the best support that you possibly can to people who are experiencing uh, significant distress or crisis. And also what would your needs be in, the, in terms of feeling confident and comfortable to be connecting the people that you're helping to support with a safe space hub in the Redcliffe area. So first of all, um, feelings and emotions, they're a number of key themes and that's how we're presenting this information to you. So one of these key themes was um, that the emergency department is not a suitable place to go when in suicidal crisis. And when you told us what you were feeling, you explained to us you were feeling exhausted, frustrated, helpless and conflicted. So just a couple of quotes for you here. Um, Friday afternoon, when people aren't feeling well, we can refer someone to the acute care team or the hospital or call an ambulance. And it always makes us feel a little helpless because we know that's not the answer. This has been the case for a long time. There's just no alternative. It just doesn't feel like there's enough support. And another comment, the hospital is not the best option. So you're left in this position where the family hears you don't need help, but really the one thing you think you need is not any good. So there's a real conflict there because you know people are desperate for something, but what we could offer just wasn't suitable. Now, when you, you have the ability to um, re-watch this webinar and you can pause it so that you can read you know, all the comments in depth. Thanks, James. Thanks, Bronnie. I was just going to explain that, but well done. And so the next theme that we looked at in these focus group conversations was the arrival at ED can be confronting and people often feel ignored. And you told us that because of this, that you were feeling frustrated and annoyed. So why were you feeling this way? Just reading out a couple of these. Going through the ED process is 
unfortunately very cold and very clinical. And a lot of people at the time of distress felt they didn't want to turn up because turn up there because they'd been turned away again. The next key theme that uh, people raised was that ED is not a safe place to wait when in suicidal crisis. Um, health professionals talked about feeling really worried and frustrated about what happened during this waiting period um, of people that they were trying to support. So a couple of comments. Um, they're presenting because they want to keep themselves safe and it's not a safe environment if you're not being seen or just sat in a bed. It's a clinical pro approach and they don't feel listened to. And the waiting is really pretty bad because when someone's presenting in that way, things have gotten really heightened for them. There's a lot going on. So it feels very disempowering to have them in the middle of the space where there's virtually no privacy, someone who just wants a place of safety where they can process what's happening. They don't get that in ED. The next theme that we explored was the treatment provided in ED often doesn't meet the needs of people presenting in suicidal crisis. What were you feeling? Ineffective, rewarded if you'd been, if you're able to get them support, although frustrated, annoyed and sad. And working in the ED has made me see that it's not just the right place for any mental health to occur. Another comment was it feels rewarding sometimes when it's the only time in someone's life when someone can just sit with them and have their feelings validated. It's very rewarding helping someone through their recovery journey and providing ongoing support as well. Another key theme was that alternatives to ED are needed. Um, and people were feeling frustrated, exhausted, angry, but also really inspired to take action. So there, were, there really was a lot of fabulous um, support for an intent for something different to happen from the health professionals. Um, so a couple of comments, you know, hearing people have to go through the hospital system, it's just not the right system. And it does get you frustrated and angry because it doesn't work. And it's been going on like that for a long time. This safe space has been needed for a very, very long time. Listening to the stories, it spurs me to action. And you think there's got to be something else out there. So then we really wanted to hear from health professionals. What do you need to feel confident and comfortable supporting a safe space hub? So we looked at um, a number of different, from a diff number of different perspectives, I guess, or different angles. So firstly, when we explored location, um, close to transport is essential close to hospital or on hospital grounds for ease of access, that it needs to be safe and a safe and well lit area, that it could be located in or near a mental health service. Some location ideas were put forward, including the breakfast club area in Redcliffe, libraries, existing mental health services. Um, and it was also brought to our attention that uh, I guess a question around how the safe space will approach the significant homelessness needs in Redcliffe. Um, from an accessibility perspective, close to public transport, again, open seven days a week, uh, open overnight when other services aren't open from late afternoon to early morning. So that discussion came about because um, whilst the blue sky dreaming is that it's open seven days a week, we know at this point in time that that's not possible. Um, that it needs to be open and welcoming for people inexperienced in seeking help and that uh, safe language and the name of the service are going to be really important for it to be um, deemed to be accessible by people in community. From a physical environment perspective, um, really looking for outdoor space, a garden, so that ability to sort of connect and be grounded, somewhere that feels like a home that's non-clinical, um, nothing that says it's a mental health provider. Uh, having a low sensory room and sensory interventions, uh, weighted dogs, so those weighted animals and, and blankets and what have you. Um, comfortable places to sit, basic food and drinks available. A combination of both open communal area and private spaces and areas where you can just sit, relax, 
listen to music, talk to someone if that's what you, the, the guest wants. Um, we talked about inward connection. So how would people actually be connected or um, arrive at the safe space hub? So um, people were looking for connections in from the emergency department um, that service providers could accompany people to the safe space and that people can come back to the space at any time, that there wasn't a restriction on the number of visits or anything like that. Thanks, Bronnie. So continuing that, uh, that sort of feel or, or the, the need to feel confident and comfortable in safe space, some of these things around outward connections, active partnerships with other services, the ability to refer to other services, be it housing, mental health, et cetera, that can assist them during the day. Follow-up offered one, two, three days out and through a phone call process. Anyone who comes in is linked with another service, a partnership with homelessness service. So the service model itself aligned with the outreach component. There might be some counselling options, groups and or art therapy, offers of a cup of tea, coffee and a chat, a sense of confidentiality and safety. Activities might be offered, a referral coordination and safety planning and a space or a model that offers time and space to process. So in terms of the staffing and workforce development, a skilled workforce, a mixture of peer workers and multidisciplinary workforce, supervision and counselling offered for peer workers, the people with lived experience who understand and the ability to manage risk and determine if somebody or someone needs clinical intervention. And finally, ability or able to manage people coming in who are homeless and have nowhere else to go. Thanks, James. So um, next steps. Uh, so as I said at the beginning, this is, uh, this is a culmination of what we've heard of the, the three um, health professional focus group sessions. We are really, really keen for those of you who took part in those to re-watch this webinar, pause it so you can read all the comments and what have you. Um, and then in the survey, if there's anything that you've thought of since, please add it in there. If there's anything that you don't think we've actually got completely right, we haven't sort of um, heard you correctly, please correct us. And um, finally, please circulate this to other health professionals that you know of in, in this particular region. So the survey will be, um, the survey link and webinar link will be sent to everyone who's been part of the um, of the process so far, as well to the PHN and, and the other services involved. Um, it'll also be on our website. And that survey will be open until the 6th of October. So you've got uh, about a week in order to respond. The next session that we then see you all at is the health professional session on the 12th of October. Um, that will be followed by another feedback loop webinar and survey like today uh, on the 19th of October. And then we'll bring equal numbers of uh, health professionals and people with lived experience together in a combined session face-to-face -face on the 28th of October as well. And that'll be followed again by a feedback loop. So um, they're the next steps for you. Thank you so much for tuning in um, and, and watching. I'll just stop sharing our um, slides for the moment. So thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for taking the time out. And, um, and please um, make sure you jump on, watch that webinar, fill in that survey and share it amongst your peers. Well done. Thanks, Bonnie. Lovely. Okay, thanks everyone. Bye.